Hey there, YouTubers. Welcome back and rock on. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about the underrated Janie Lane since today was, well, this week was his birthday. And um, Warrant has always been one of my favorite bands growing up. And um, just Janie Lane in general, one of the best songwriters that never got any credit for what he deserved. And um, just going to go briefly into it. He was born just a couple hours north of me in Akron, Ohio. Graduated in the early 80s, then moved to Florida with his band Plain Jane, and it had actually Stephen Sweet on drums. Um, he had his real name originally, and then he changed it. And then they struggled uh, for a year, but they decided to try the big time in L.A., so they went out there for a year or two, playing the club scene. Uh, they opened for Warrant, <laughs> believe it or not, and then Eric Turner saw them, and I guess the original singer and drummer quit. Some, and he liked what he heard from Steven and Janie and the rest was history. And Warren began playing in Hollywood and on the club circuit and becoming more and more popular. And by the late 80s, released their debut album, which is this, Dirty, Rotten, Filthy, Stinking, Rich. Um, this album is a pretty solid debut album and it had top uh, four or five uh, songs on the top charts on the billboard heaven my favorite possibly my favorite warren song their biggest uh, song off this album and biggest chart hit hit number two and they had also like sometimes she cries um what else uh big talk i think was a single um and the down boys where the down boys go and it's a good uh, it's a good album but it's kind of cheesy i mean um like in the sticks uh cold sweat there's a lot of like filler type songs on it too so it has high points then low points and like i said it's my third favorite um you know album by them and they had the video for uh, heaven where they had the white suits all matching which is pretty cool and then after that came their biggest success their highest selling album, which was Cherry Pie, their most famous song and album. <clears throat> Got something stuck in my throat. And um, the videos where Jenny Lane made, met Bobby Brown and, you know, the rest is history, and unfortunately. And uh, it, this was like Paranoid, which is my favorite song by Black Sabbath. They wrote it because they didn't feel like they had a hit on the album, so they wrote Paranoid in 10 minutes. Same way with Cherry Pie, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which is probably the best so song off this album in general. Uh, was going to be the lead single, but I, I guess like the studio or the, the producer didn't think it had hit material, so they wrote Cherry Pie in like 10 minutes. And that's what the band became known for, and that's what Janie Lane hated all his career. He's like, This is, I'm not, a, I wrote many better songs than fucking Cherry Pie. Even he went on record saying it many times. And, uh, but Blind Faith uh, is probably my favorite song off this album. Um, like I already mentioned to Uncle Tom's Cabin, I Saw Red, which is a really great song about uh, Janie Lane walking in on his ex-girlfriend, cheating on him. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, You're the Only Hell Your Mama Ever Raised, really good song, very underrated. And um, it this was their hit single and album, and it started going, you know, playing in strip clubs, playing in movies, TV, and you know, everybody knew that album. And uh, I also have it on... CD and cassette somewhere and I have the poster check this out I don't want to really take it out too much but I have it the original four poster and it says cherry pie see them on tour I'll uh, fix that after the video and I found this recently last year it was in a record store. I'm like, this is pretty sweet. It's one of those mirrors that you would see like carnivals. You can win when you throw darts. And that's cherry pie mirror. And it, I got it for like 10 bucks. I don't know if it's even worth that, but it's, it's a cool piece to have. And so the band was riding high. And, um, you know, and he met Bobby Brown through the video. And they got married. And it was a very rocky relationship. And very so many people said she treated him like shit and took him for granted. And... He had a lot of troubles with her and they divorced within like a year and then during the divorce or right before uh, the divorce warren came out with this my favorite i already talked about it i'll post a video of at the end of the album that's dog eat dog which is a very 
I don't know. It's like a very deep album, very personal, very, um, uh, the lyrics were very like, uh, strongly connected to serious topics, whether it be voyeurism, you know, uh, hole in the wall, uh, April 2031, which is very reminiscent of what's going on now with a, you know, if you want to believe all that, the, uh, agenda 2030, Hmm. Uh, Andy Warhol was right where, you know, some psychopath, you know, sees this person getting all the fame. So he meets up with him and kills him because he wants his fame. And it's loosely based on John Lennon. I heard, I don't know how true that is. And Bitter Pill, which might be my favorite Warren song. It's just amazing how love can be the greatest thing and also the greatest heartbreak. Um, so far, so good. You know, it's about materialism and Let It Rain, another ballad about, you know, being lonely and sad. But this album here, it might be the most underrated piece of work anywhere of his generation. It's just so good. And I have it here on cassette and CD. I wish it had this. I mean, the shitty South Korean pressing, which I don't do South Korean pressings, has this version. I don't get why they have to have the, the gray border, but whatever. And um, Jenny Lane noticed that Capitol Records, I think that's who produced this, um, if I remember right. Well, it says Sony Music, but I could have swore it was Capitol. Whatever, I mean, the label headquarters took down, because it was 1992, took down the poster and put up their band poster and put up Alice in Chains, because, you know, grunge was the new thing. And... Um, he noticed the change, like they wouldn't promote the album. And even though it was a top 30 album, it did go gold. It should have been way more. But of course, grunge came, ruined music, in my opinion. And it's never been the same in North America. So that's a different video, which makes me uh, uh, say this. I should do a video um, on the best grunge era albums that come out of the grunge period, which I should do soon. And the next up, it took a couple years. I think it was 1995 when we finally got the so-called comeback album that's being ultraphobic and this does have a 90 sound to it but it also it's really good and it's not really a, it has hints of alternative rock and post grunge not really grunge but it's it's definitely a more when you listen to it it's a more like alternative hard rock album compared to the rest and uh, it's um my fourth uh favorite foreign album and Cherry Poppy in second and Doggy Dog being first. Uh, the Undertow is pretty good. Um, it's one of the better songs on the album. Family Picnic was the video they released about child abuse. And like I said, this album is a very personal album, dark album. Chameleons about a person that keeps changing uh, their, you know, how they are. Like you'll see somebody, that, oh, they act like they're they're nice, but they're actually mean. And, you know, and it's, it's just really good uh, song too. Um, uh, stronger now that this is another very amazing uh, all acoustic ballad that they actually made a video for surprisingly um, and uh, it's one of the better Warren songs and you know it's just talking about personal growth and uh, you know coming through from all the depression and shit and it's just it's really good even though there's no not a lot going on in the song so yeah um, an undertow with the leadoff single I meant to say that first uh, all undertow ultraphobic you know fuck those are the two two of the other highlights and some of one being a lonely song a lonely person um feeling like you're no no good and yeah it's it's a really strong album it's very underrated it needs a vinyl release really badly it was uh out on cmc international and uh which is like the first frontiers if you know frontiers frontiers record now out of italy um, they have all these old 80s hard rock, hair metal, and metal bands, um, just like CMC International did, but it went bankrupt. Some of the, they have some of the better ones, like Show Business on CMC International, and uh, the one that box set I have I talked about, um, Fear No Evil, Slaughter, also on CMC International. So then afterwards, um, I think Joey Allen left the band and replaced by Kingdom Come Rick Steer, Steer, Steerer, Steerer, I'm not sure how it's pronounced guitarist and uh, James Kodak and so my uh, Steven Sweet left and James Kodak came out for this piece of shit this is definitely a grunge album or at least post grunge album belly to belly warrant 96 but um, there's one really good song off this album um, and that's Indian Giver and it has a great bass groove to it it's it's a really cool alternative metal song 
And the only other song that uh, uh, that would be decent is Letter to a Friend. It starts out really crappy with this acoustic in- intro, but then in the chorus and picks up and it, it picks up speed. It's like a slow ballad, then boom, it's a hard rocker song, and then in the middle and back to acoustic. Um, Letter to a Friend's pretty underrated song. Indian Giver might be my top 20 Warren songs because it's a pretty damn fucking solid album or song. AYM was meh. Yeah, I can listen to it. It's this lead-off single. But other than that, this this is a trash album. Um, if you like grunge, you might like this. Um, but there's not much else I can say about it. Like I said, uh, it was the two different members. And it was also released on CMC International. And I forgot to pick it up. But I have the cassette of Warrant Live 96-97 on this tour. And they played songs from this and other you know albums previously. And it's a good live album, solid live album. And after that, Jenny Lane left Warrant, right? And um, he did Back Down to One, and uh, he did his own covers album, which neither I have. And um, he came back briefly, and they did a... I don't like covers albums, so I don't have a lot, and this doesn't count. I don't count them in this list, but they he, he came back, and he did um, uh, Under the Influence, which was a covers album with two new songs, Face and Subhuman. I saw them on that tour. 2001 ish i think 2001 was about 2000 2001 and then uh they did latest and greatest which was uh, re-recordings of their hits like cherry pie and i forget what else was on there heaven uncle tom's cabin whatever and three new songs and there was uh, those songs were pretty damn bad and then he left again and within a few years uh he got remarried and had another child and then in 2011, he was found dead in a comfort inn of all places in Woodland Hills, California. And the, I guess it was uh, accidental alcohol poisoning with a prescription medication. And uh, before that, I, I forgot to say he was on like his career went to shit. And, you know, he was on Celebrity Fit Club where the black guy was insulting him, calling him a waste of sperm. He gained weight. And he actually, he quit the show, I think. And, um, he was found dead with a note. It says, supposedly anyway, I am Jamie Lane right on him. So it's kind of, if that is true, makes you wonder, right? And then Bobby Brown, who they say the bitch that she is, wrote, uh, did a book and um, said he was raped by some Hollywood or big music executive and all this shit. I don't know how true it is. I don't know if she's trying to cash in on his uh, death. But, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because he went through a lot of shit. He was kind of like the Brendan Fraser of music at the time. How Brendan Fraser, you know, had all that personal shit happen the same way as sexual harassment and all that. And, uh, yeah, it's just a sad ending for Jamie Lane because he wrote, like, Doggy Dog's one of my favorite albums ever made. And they have, um, you know, I Saw Red, Uncle Tom's Cabin, Heaven. I mean, there's countless great songs that he wrote. But he just, with the changing in the music, what came... Such a high level, then Bobby Brown, and then boom, even more grunge, which today basically killed music. That I'm biased because I grew up with this era, even though I'm the age of grunge basically. But I grew up with hearing like the 80s metal, and ever since grunge hit, metal of all kinds of metal died in the 90s, and it's never been the same. Uh, so, yeah, I mean. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a video of the grunge era albums. And I'll do uh, multiple albums by the same band because I could probably do Dog Eat Dog again and Ultraphobic. Even though Dog Eat Dog was right at the beginning of grunge pretty much. But um, anyway, uh, that's the video I was going to talk about because I wanted to get a video out about Jenny Lane because I feel that he was one of the most underappreciated uh, songwriters ever. And it's just, just sad how it ended for him. So... Um, once again, thanks for watching. I'll put the dog eat dog video at the end right here. And um, I just hope you all have a good day, good week. Um, keep on rocking, and I'll see you soon.